We made this. Hello and welcome to Life's Milestones, the podcast about birth and naming ceremonies, relationships and marriage, and death and funerals. My name's Mark Adams, I am your host, and I am a humanist celebrant. That means that I perform non-religious naming ceremonies, weddings, and funerals. This is episode four of the podcast, and my guest is Kat Allen. Kat I've known for a couple of years, and we've bonded very much over the fact that we both own small businesses. Her business is very different to mine. Obviously, mine is my celebrant's work. Hers is Noodle Performing Arts. And that is based in Nutsford, Cheshire, where she has various performing arts related services for people, which includes birthday parties or classes in dance or acting and anything like that. She is also a member of UK Bjorn, which is a ABBA tribute act. So you can see Kat perform as Agneska, which is pretty cool. Kat's full of life and incredibly motivated and inspirational and having worked for her she is one of these people that inspired me to take the plunge and work for myself as well she's brilliant and i really think you're going to enjoy her interview as is the case so far for all of the interviews that I've presented to you on Life's Milestones, this was recorded before the coronavirus pandemic. And as such, there'll be less reference to that than you might expect. And the services that CAP provides have had to change due to the COVID-19 situation. But I'll go into that on my little sign-off after the interview. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Past Mark and Kat Allen. With me at this time is Kat Allen, who is the local franchise for me, owner of Noodle Performing Arts. Hello, Kat. Hello. So, tell me a little bit about about Noodle Performing Arts. We are a uh, company that specialises in delivering dance and drama classes to children from walking up to 16 mainly sort of musical theatre based and we're all around Cheshire and sort of South Manchester, Trafford, that area. Um, And we're also a party entertainment service so spend a lot of our time dressed as various princesses and pirates and other interesting characters as you well know. Yeah, well um, it's not something I tend to to really put on social media or anything but yeah I I do occasionally work for Noodle and I I have indeed been Spider-Man Darth Vader a pirate and yeah. acted like an idiot and, and and you've paid me to do that which is which is lovely thank you fantastic way to earn a living really isn't it <laughs> <laughs> indeed it is so we're going to do a little bit of a guest profile and first up is I know it's quite a personal question but um this is quite a personal podcast how old are you I am 42 42 so 21 21 twice. twice. <laughs> Do you know? I might use that. 21 I'm, again. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to use that because I'm 42 in just a couple of months, so I think I'm going to use that. Fair 21 enough. twice. So, where are you from and what's your background? Well, I lived most of my life in Nutsford, which is in Cheshire. And most people know it as Junction 19 of the M6. It's got uh, a service station. It has a service station. And I was actually born in Bromley, down in Kent. Well, it depends whether if you're Kent based. People say it's Greater London. If you're in London, they say it's Kent. Nobody actually wants to <laughs> own it. <So. laughs> Is it that bad? <laughs> it's apparently so. I wasn't you moved away? I moved up here when I was about three. Right, OK. Yeah, and I've been here, there, and all over the place, really. And I, like, I love this question, because if people don't give me enough of an answer, I kind of prompt them. What do you do that makes you interesting? <laughs> Other than noodle performing art stuff, dressing like Wonder Woman and uh, and Elsa, and who else have you done recently? Uh, well, well, who have I been recently? I have been uh, Cinderella. Rapunzel? Rapunzel. Good. I don't do Rapunzel. My neck isn't strong enough for the wig. Wow. <laughs> it's that bad. So Suffer for your art. Suffer for my art. I am in an ABBA band. See, I was going to make sure you mentioned that. So you're in an ABBA tribute band. Which member of ABBA are you? Bjorn. I normally, 
I I have not bothered to shave. Uh, you're not. Well, as it's a podcast, I've decided not to bother shaving today. Bjorn. Uh, no, I'm Agneta, so I'm the blonde one, which is great, really. I love it. It's what's what's your other tribute band it. called? UK Bjorn. UK Bjorn. UK Bjorn. And um, yeah. how do people book that if they want an ABBA tribute band? Uh, they can go on Facebook. We're on Facebook as UK Bjorn, a tribute to ABBA, or www.ukbjorn.co.uk. Yeah, we're we'll just look us up. Give Brilliant. us a like. Brilliant. It's good fun. Great fun. So we're going to move on to questions about birth. Where and when and how were you born? I was born in 1978, on the 7th of January, if you want to remember that, put it in your diary, send me a card, wine, (laughs) wine, Uh, (laughs) always wine, and like I said, I was born in Bromley, so Farnborough Common, and uh, I was born, I think, quite normally, according to my mum, it was the first time, and subsequently the only time since, that I've actually been on time. Wow. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> I came on my due date. So, uh, yeah. And never been punctual since. That's quite rare, though, isn't it? Very actually rare. arriving on the <laughs> yeah. due date. And I was the first in the family, so that's really unusual. Mm. So, Tell us a favourite story about your childhood. About it? Yeah, something mm. from your childhood. I had a pretty normal childhood, I think. It's quite unusual. Me too. Isn't it boring? Yeah, it's really boring. 2.4 boring. Especially when you go to being an actor because everybody there is sort of you know they've gone into acting because they've all got some horrendous story from their youth that they have to (laughs) you know bring into their acting somehow and i had absolutely nothing same in wrestling yeah i mean the only thing i could really say about my childhood is i was traumatized at a very early age by the film watership down okay viciously horrible impact on my uh on my childhood i mean it it is quite a traumatic film i watched it i watched it a few years ago and i was like Bloody hell, this is made for kids. Apparently, uh, in the last sort of couple of years, they have decided to up the rating to a PG. Too right. I know. Uh, but yes, I spent a lot of time with my mum trying to feed my rabbit after dark because I refused to go out of the house to feed wow. the rabbit after dark. Really daft, really daft stuff. And in fact, I was driving back from a gig at about three in the morning the other week and uh, a rabbit ran out in front of me and I couldn't stop. Because it it was, you know, straight into the front. And on shuffle on my iPod, uh, Bright Eyes came up about three minutes later. And I just thought, you know what, I think (laughs) I'm going to be haunted for the rest of my life. (laughs) Permanently Um, haunted by Watership Down. Permanently haunted, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's one traumatic aspect of my childhood. Do you want to tell a nice story of your childhood rather than I was traumatised by Watership Down? One of my biggest things when I was a child, which I really, really was really proud of, and I was a bit of a teen at this point, was I was a major fan of Andre Agassi. Okay. When he won Wimbledon in 1992. And um, we went on holiday to Europe. And I don't know if anybody remembers it, but he used to wear a white baseball cap with a black Nike tick on it. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah, my brother had it. Right. Well, it was not available in the UK for a year after that. Whoa. And I went all around Europe and bugged my parents relentlessly to get me this hat, to find this hat. So when we were on holiday, we spent all our time going in and out of these various sports stores. Couldn't find it anywhere, so... um, My dad said, well, why don't you just write to Nike then? Go on, write to them. So I did. I wrote a humorous letter to the managing director or the head of Nike, whoever. Right. And I actually got a hat back. That's amazing. (laughs) And it came back with a little letter saying, don't tell your friends you are the only person in the UK with this hat. That's pretty amazing. Mm. So I told everybody, obviously. Of course you Fantastic, did. Fantastic uh, <laughs> <laughs> promotion for Nike. Brilliant. But, yeah, I love it. Off the top of my head, uh, one of them are nice stories. Lots of nice stories from my childhood, really. But That one's one pretty I, cool. Springs to mind. Mm. So this is where the podcast might split, depending on how you answer. Right. Do you have children? I do. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the yes side. Did you have a naming ceremony, a christening, or any other celebration to welcome your children into the world? Yes. They didn't weren't exactly welcomed by it, because I think Nelson was three, and Josh was about 18 months when we had it. So they were quite... A joint one for the two of them. a joint one. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, my, my kids are half Portuguese by descent, so 
we didn't get them christened when we were over here and we were actually married after we had them so we had a very standard marriage ceremony in England and then when we moved over to Madeira which is where their dad is from we had them christened over there and we actually had to have our service redone we had to have another marriage service good grief mainly because I'm not Catholic and he is right and so over here he got like a special dispensation from the Pope or something to be able to be married in a C of E church right and then when we went over there we had to do it all over again for the Catholic Church so that the kids could be baptised. Right, so you had them both baptised at the same time? At the same time, Catholic, in, which is in Madeira. In a Madeira church? Yeah. Was it in, what, what language did they speak in Madeira? Portuguese? Portuguese. Was it, it was all in Portuguese, or, yeah. Do you speak Portuguese? <laughs> I do, I'm fluent oh, okay. in Portuguese. <laughs> oh, okay. But I wasn't as much then, I, 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 but I could say seeing, which is yes or I do kind of thing. Right, so right. Get away with nodding and that kind of stuff. It, yeah, we had to do it all over again. It was quite... Bizarre. That's, that's bizarre. So, mm. do you have any other stories about it other than the fact that it was in Portuguese and it <laughs> was in Madeira? And um, did, w- was that something you always wanted to do? Do you think I, it wasn't something I planned on? I wanted to get them christened. I'm not overtly religious, particularly, but I think I just always thought, you know, I got married in a church. Mainly, it was the cheapest option at the time. Right. So when I looked around in terms of places that you could hire. So we, we just, I just, it was a natural thing just to get married in the church. And then when we got them christened, we just, we just did. And because we were over there, there isn't an option to do it in anything other than Catholic. Catholic right. Over there, because that's what they are. I mean, it was a really lovely service. The funniest thing about it is, obviously, because over there, they're very laid back kind of people. So okay. I arrived and everybody else arrived and the vicar hadn't arrived or the priest hadn't arrived. And when he ran in, he kind of sidestepped all of us, ran in the back, got his over you know, his overalls and over, I don't think they're called overalls. <laughs> his robes or whatever you I, call them. I mean I don't have Vesti. a specific outfit for oh, my job. Them? But your vest- vestments. Vestments, that's it. He went and got oh. his vestments on, but in on the pictures you can still see his lumberjack shirt sleeves Amazing. underneath as he's pouring the water over. Did, <laughs> did he have a hat? <laughs> he didn't have a hat. No. See, he should have had a hat. This is something that I deeply resent of religious folk doing mm. the kind of similar job to me, but with faith involved. Is that I don't get a hat. You don't get. I want. I want. A, I want a standard issue hat. He but, could have had but, all sorts with his little lumberjack thing. He yeah, could true. Have had a, could have he had, could a, have had a chainsaw. <laughs> So burst into I'm, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I'm, I'm not sure a it. chainsaw and a christening <laughs> is a good combo, but um, not really. That's amazing. So mm. he just turned up, did, didn't get changed properly into his vestments. No, he just shoved on his vestments, ran out, started pouring water everywhere. It was wow, great. great. If you had another kid, would you do the same, or do you think you'd try something different? Well, I'd probably do the same just for the whole continuity of having mm. the three children and why w- why did we have to do it and yeah. that kind of thing whether I, I wouldn't necessarily do it catholic because i'm i'm not and i'm now not with my husband so we're not there's no sort of reason for them to be it does raise questions though the fact that we're all of different religions more in the fact that the kids sometimes say well hang on does this mean that you're going to go that way and i'm going to go this way with different heavens but, yeah that, and, and there isn't but it's kind of a it's an interesting one. So all, you, interesting. you and your two boys and your former partner all have, all have faith. Mm, yeah. I mean, well, I wouldn't say we're practicing much of anything. And the children do often say, "I'm not." You know, they're at Catholic school, but they don't necessarily believe particularly. They're not overtly ca- religious. We don't go to mass. I think it's a deeply personal thing. That, right. You know, you take from it what you need. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't have to be celebrated in a church or anything like that. I think there is some real relevance in the argument that you would give the same situation to all of your children. My my mum and dad were um, almost obsessive about that. They, they they kind of marked the age that my pocket money went up so that the, exactly the yeah. same age, my brother's pocket money could go up at yeah. the same time and stuff like that. So I think that's... I think that's quite, that can be quite important to children, particularly when they're young. Because if they see, I mean, it's, it's like mobile phones. My son got a mobile phone when he went up to high school. So obviously when the next one said, oh, I want a mobile phone, and it had to be, no, you can't have that until, because otherwise you, you lose that continuity, and then one mm. of them or the other one will see it as a one rule for him, one for me. Yeah. And it makes life very difficult otherwise. Yeah, I can imagine. So, plus the bills go up if you get them early. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
So let's move on to talking about weddings. We have briefly touched on it when we mm. were talking about your your family. So, I mean, the question is, are you married? Was. Was. Mm. Okay, so you, you're separated. Divorced. Divorced, earlier. okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your wedding day, or do you want to talk about potentially getting married in future? Um... Or both? I don't mind. I can talk about both. Um, Okay, well, tell me about your wedding day. Wedding day was lovely. It was really nice. It was freezing cold. It was in February, um, but it was beautiful sunshine. And it's every girl's dream to have that kind of wedding in the big dress. Mm. So I did it. You know, unfortunately, the marriage didn't last. The day was great. The marriage, not so much. (laughs) But, yeah, it was lovely. You got all your friends there. You've got everybody. and, And it was lovely to see everybody. We had quite a lot came over from... Uh, Madeira and some from mm. family from everywhere. So it's it's always nice to sort of celebrate that with everyone. I mean, in terms of getting married again, I don't. Me personally, I don't think I would. You if I did, would. it would be a very low key affair. Mm. It might. It's, it's not. It's a never. It's not a never say never. Never have children again. I don't think I'd have children. No ever. more. No more. You no. only got two. That's plenty. That's plenty. Trust me, it's plenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, d- I don't know whether I'd go down the route of getting married again. Maybe. I'll never say never on that, but it wouldn't be a big affair. Yeah, so so you, do you feel like, having been married and divorced, that it's changed your opinion of marriage and how much you believe in this as, a, um, as an institution? I think the really sad thing is that knowing now how easy it is to get divorced, mm. I think it's so easy to get in and out of it I mean, it's harder to get out of a contract with O2 than it <laughs> is to get out of a marriage, and it takes less time. Wow. But and if I'm absolutely honest, I don't feel that my marriage was particularly well-founded in the first place. And right. when I did go to see my divorce lawyer, he kind of said, do you have any assets? Do you have anything, you know, that you need to split? And I said, well, no, it's only the kids. And he said, well... You can't split them. You can't split them, no. <laughs> well, you could, but you'd, you'd be in the nick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but he kind of just said, you know, well, to be honest, he said if, the, if it wasn't for the kids, this divorce would be a very simple affair. And mm. I said, well, to be honest, if it wasn't for the kids, there wouldn't have been a marriage in the first place. Right. So, in many ways, if I could go back and change things, I would have done things very differently. Okay. So, but because of that, I think if maybe it had more of a founded relationship, I would have more faith in marriage. But because it was so mm. easy to get out of it, nowadays it is. People don't have that sort of longevity in mind. Well, we can do it, but it doesn't necessarily mean we have to stick it. Yeah. So let, let's let's talk about the day itself. What okay. made your your ceremony unique to you? Well, it was it was quite interesting in that we had a obviously we had a Portuguese contingent there, so everybody had come over from Portugal. So half the audience didn't audience half the congregation didn't have a clue <laughs> what any, what was going on. There was no translator. There was no translator. No. no, the best man himself spoke brilliant English, but was not necessarily equipped for public speaking so his right. his, his um, speech kind of consisted of taking mini toast swigs between every line so by the end of it everybody was drunk so okay fine. good and i mean i had a friend of mine did our disco who's an absolutely fantastic friend of mine and he always says to me i says do not talk to me about your wedding because every it, it was a nightmare for him because portuguese people kept coming up to him and asking him for a request that he'd never heard of <laughs> so he's like don't talk to me about your wedding never want to hear about it again brilliant um and uh and we were, we actually had it done at a friend's restaurant which was a portuguese restaurant so it was Lovely. quite all the staff were portuguese so that was quite nice mm. and the kids were there yeah, so that's, you know, going against the grain, but that... Uh, How old were they? Josh was uh, my youngest. He was only six months. Right. And so he has no recollection of it whatsoever, no. and he had horrendous eczema. So he was in a car seat. He used to have, like, a tubey grip f- all in one. I've seen them. Yeah, and then you'd have a wet one. Yeah. And then you'd, you'd have to put all this stuff all over his body, all this cream. Then you put the wet one on. Then you put a dry version on the top. Oh, poor and boy. it had his little hood. And he looked like Tinky Winky. <laughs> <laughs> but, so he, he looked like that for the whole thing. Um, and Nelson was a page boy. So he was Adorable. about two and a half. He Adorable. was absolutely gorgeous. I've got the photos. Of yeah, him. I'm sure he Amazing. loves those photos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't think there's one on display somewhere, and I think he'll be trying to hide that. By t- he's <laughs> 18 in two years, so I think he'll be uh, <laughs> he'll be trying to hide that pretty quick. What song did you pick for your first dance? <laughs> 
this always makes me laugh because it's got absolutely no relevance to anything. Good, good. I'll, I'll add it to the playlist regardless. <laughs> I didn't actually pick it. Andre kind of went, I've had an idea. Let's use this. And it was, oh my God, Faith Hill singing the song from Pearl Harbor. Do you know the film Pearl yeah. Harbor? Yeah. <laughs> In your eyes I always see you fly above the sky, that one. Right. No relevance for it whatsoever, no, no idea. I think it was because Andre had been to see the film. He'd actually act- <laughs> I think he'd gone to the wrong film. It's quite a pretty song. <laughs> it, but it's, it's a pretty song. I don't know why we chose it. I really <laughs> don't. And every so often I hear it and I go, oh, this was my wedding song. And it should be the other way around. It should, it's supposed to yeah. be that your wedding, you go, oh, this is the song that means so much. But the only memory I have is Andre dancing around the living room going, this would be really good, wouldn't it? <laughs> and that's it. Because <laughs> you're starting to see where the cracks in the relationship yeah, I mean, forming. And, and you married him twice as well. <laughs> I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to get the most out of the wedding dress. Right, <laughs> so you wore the same frock. I did. Brilliant. And I got it taken in and let out, and taken in and let out a million <laughs> times. So, yeah, I wanted. To, I like getting my money's worth. Right, good. Yeah. Have I, you still got it? I have still got it. Can't get rid of the damn thing. It's cursed. <laughs> it's not very easy to sell something when you say, like, you know, worn twice, worn still twice. divorced. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> It just doesn't work. No, I, I mean, would you really want to get rid of it? It, it seems like... <laughs> yes! It's like an omen. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mum and dad do. It's in their house, I think. Oh, your mum and dad have got it? <laughs> yeah. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah. So, it seems like you, you've got a really good attitude towards the fact that you had a, a wedding that didn't work out. Yeah. But then it sounds like you probably get on OK with him now and... Yeah, because he you've got the Devon, boys. so it's great. Oh, OK. <laughs> it's kind of about as, you know, close as he needs to be, really. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, we do get on. Uh, the, the boys, obviously, they love them to pieces. And there were periods when I came back from Madeira when we... We didn't talk, and then we went through a bit of a stage where we weren't talking. But to be honest, um, we've kind of overcome that a bit. And as the boys are getting older, they're kind of a little bit wiser to it. Yeah. I've always tried very hard not to sort of paint a really nasty picture of him, because at the end of the day, whatever my reasons are for leaving, it's not their problem. No. It's not their reason, it's not their sort of fault. So they grow up, they make their own decisions. Of course. About whatever. Absolutely. Um, Shall we talk about, in theory, if you got married again? Yes. So, in theory, if you got married mm. again, what would be involved in your perfect wedding? What would you do Hugh differently? Hugh Jackman. Okay, Hugh Jackman, yeah, good. he would be involved in my perfect wedding. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Isn't he already married? Yeah. You can't have him. No. No. Okay. Uh, I was thinking more, like, type of cake or type of... <laughs> aisle or type of frock or all the elements or, that, yeah. that aren't the person themselves <laughs> I suppose well I think I would I would go for a much more low key mm. affair I wouldn't necessarily use a church it would be something very much and I in my ideal world I would be living in Australia or somewhere sunny right and it would be close friends close family outdoors very simple. Mm. Not a white dress, clearly. But um, why not a white dress? Well, why not the same dress? <laughs> I do tend to spill stuff when I eat. So oh, I could <laughs> wear the same dress. <laughs> I <could>. <laughs> <laughs> might as well. I've got one. Um, I could put that on. That's a unique that's selling on my point for match. you. Match. com, isn't I've it? Got it a comes frock. with own dress. <laughs> um, not fussy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, it would just be, and you know, a barbecue and a and a bit of a knees up is sounds fine all right. For me. That I, yeah, I'd enjoy that. Pretty chilled, mm. maybe an ABBA band. <laughs> yeah, you, would, would you play at your own uh, wedding? Oh, I don't know. I, I, don't I, I, do. I did a ceremony for a guy who's in a wedding band, and oh, really? um, he played at his own wedding. Really? He, his his wife only allowed him like a four or five part set, but he played at his own wedding, which I thought was equal parts cool and also. Have a day off, mate. Well, it, there is that. And my brother got married um, a couple of years ago, and my dad said, would you want to sing at his wedding? And it, uh, I was quite hurt, actually, because he went, no, she doesn't. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks very much. But um, he didn't do it like that. I think it was more the fact that... I mean, it, if he's not into ABBA. Well, I mean, I used to do my own solo stuff as well. I used oh, okay. to be a solo singer before I did that. But he'd been to see me. He doesn't want mm. his sister standing up singing the same old mm. tripe that she sings down the restaurant down the road at, you know, for his wedding and that kind of thing. And 
and I don't want to do it. It's too much pressure. Yeah. Weddings are pressure. You know, as you well know, weddings are. Yeah. They've got to be that. You I mean, know thing. I mean, Dan, when he played at his own wedding, he was great. Mm. It was a great set, and yeah. it was really nice that he played uh, the first song that he played. Uh, his wife requested a song, and that was part of his ceremony. And he right. played that song as part of the set. And I thought that, that was ace. But uh, just a little thing in the back of my mind was, have a day off, mate. Oh, that's it. It's an added pressure to the day, yeah. isn't it? You don't really want to be worrying about forgetting your words. If you... Either uh, at either point in, yes. in the ceremony. Really. He didn't. He did really well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I could. I wouldn't do it. I'd get somebody else to do it. Mm. And I'd have Queen just as a giggle. <laughs> right. <laughs> just to surprise everybody. Good. So so would Queen... This this was going to be the last question on marriage, but um, would Queen would, would Queen then be your first dance, or what would be your first dance? Um, well, I'd, I mean, that would very much depend on the person that I was marrying. Mm, perhaps. I suppose... There's, I, I love music. There's so much music that I really, I really love. And I know it's really, really pathetic, but um, because everybody uses it, Canon, <laughs> Canon, you know, Pasha Bell's Canon, that one, that one. Right. Oh, that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, and everybody uses it for weddings. But the only reason, it's a nice one. Well, the, it, this, my son used before he took up drumming and decided he was going to be a rock star. He was really good at the violin and he used to play the violin all the time. And he was really, really, really good. Did aced all of his exams and everything. And he used to he played canon and I missed it because I I couldn't make the performance that he did it. But oh, that's I always thought to myself I would love to walk down the aisle and have him playing it. That's lovely. Of course, that's really it lovely. Doesn't translate as well on a drum kit. So no. <laughs> could he not? Could he not go back to it? I'm hoping one day he will. There's a little bit of me because I love the fact that he plays the drums and I love the fact that he wants to be a rocker and all that Dr- kind of stuff. Drummers are usually the coolest member of the band. They are, but they're also the ones that take up the most space and the most time. I haven't worked with a couple. They yeah, take yeah, up all yeah. the space. They take up a load of time to get themselves sorted. Mm. And I, I love the fact that he's doing it. But there is a, every time that. So comes on the radio, I always turn to him and he goes, don't say it. <laughs> 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 but I want it, I know. But you're not getting married anyway, are you? Because well, you're you mum. There you go. Yeah. Mum can't get married. Mum's not, yeah. Is that not allowed? It's not, I just don't think they like the thought of it being, I don't know really. Yeah, well, would Me you have... having w- fun. Would you have them <laughs> as page boys again? I don't think I could if I paid them. <laughs> I love no, it. No, they'd be ushers. They'd be ushers. By that point, they'd probably be under a table drinking the champagne or something. They'd be well, you know. snaffling it. Yeah, Nicky Mum champagne. Mm. <laughs> they, yeah. they might have done that already. <laughs> they probably have. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the final section, which is about death. And the first question is... It, 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 it's pretty deep at this point. The first question is, are you scared of death? Um, No. I don't think I've ever been scared of it. I'm scared of pain. Okay. So, in the idea of actually sort of death and not being around doesn't really scare me, but the idea of being in some kind of pain leading mm-hmm. up to it, I'm not, I don't tolerate pain very well. So, you'd be okay with a dignified death or a quick death, but you're, mm. you're more scared of... Yeah, lingering. Yes. Yeah, and anything, anything, anything more than five minutes, I think, <laughs> would probably, yeah, I don't, I don't really want, to, I, I don't really want to be aware of it, I know that, right. I'd rather not be aware of what's going on, so either a very instant thing, or peacefully in my sleep, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, and mm. I think, as this show goes on, that that's probably going to be quite a popular way of answering the, the, mm. the question, and I think... There's, I mean, there's a lot of campaigning about uh, the right to die and things like that. Yeah. What What do you think of that? Do you think you would want the right to die? I think so. I think there's an. I think there is an argument for it. Mm. I, I do. Um, I mean, we do it with animals, and uh, I don't think we make that decision for them. And there's very little that people argue about it. But I mean, when it comes to humans, I suppose there is that element that everybody kind of says, well, you know, if they were in a in a different situation, would people change their minds? Like the death yeah. penalty, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, once you've done it, it's final. There's no going back. Well, yes. But then that's it, isn't it? I mean, there's no recover. There's nobody no, but come I back think, to you. I mean, the death penalty, it's 
it's not the person's choice, is it? No, exactly. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's somebody else's choice. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the whole euthanasia thing, I think if you are, if you know that you have got nowhere else to, you know, no way of recovery and you are staring down that tunnel of it's only going to get worse. Mm. And you've said, you know, at least if, if that's the case, you have the opportunity to then do the things that you want to do, say goodbye to the people that you want at the time that you want, yeah. and then be able to sort of slip away aided and dignified. Yeah. And I think that's a much nicer way than being left to, to rot in a hospital bed I, And I think something. the word dignity is, is important in mm. when talking about this issue. I think if people lose their ability to make a decision that important in their own life, you can see why it becomes unpleasant for them. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's a... It, I mean, it's a really hard thing. I don't... I don't hope... I hope to God it never happens, but it, it's... Uh, yeah, it's something definitely that I would... I would consider. Mm. So, have you ever experienced the death of a loved one? No, not in terms of really immediate family. I've lost grandparents. Yeah. Had a, a situation a couple of months ago, or <laughs> six months ago, where a child who was a, a very, very good friend of my youngest son died rather tragically at the age of 12. I think I remember you mentioning it at mm. the time and I was like, it, it, it's just <clears throat> impossible to empathise until you're in the situation, I think. No, it's just, it's a very, very surreal sort of situation and it happened during the summer holidays because he was on holiday uh, when it happened and um, because of that the children obviously weren't all at school mm. and they all went to school together and I kind of thought it's going to hit more when they go back to school and he's not there. Right. It's very much that, um, at the moment, it's all... I remember Nelson was my eldest was saying to me, I can't really believe he's gone. So right. it's not really real. Was and it Nelson, Nelson's friend or Josh's friend? Josh's, Josh's friend. friend. So they were at preschool together. So Nelson was 14 and Josh was 12. And his funeral was actually on his 13th birthday. Good. So it was a very, very poignant thing. Yeah, um, I think thing. there's an element of... I, I like it, but it's also heartbreaking at the same time. It is. I think it that's. Is. It's nice that they did it, but mm. it's also really, really I tough. Think the reality is, though, that if you have lost a child, no matter what day you do it, it's going yeah. to hurt, and yeah. that birthday is always going to hurt. So, at least they said goodbye bye to him on that day. And Did you it was, go to the funeral with Josh? I went with Nelson and Josh, and it was a... I've never seen the church that full, mm. to be absolutely honest. It was absolutely packed. He was a very vivacious young man, and he had a lot, uh, so much going for him. And he was a very keen rugby player, so he played rugby with my son. Um, and all the, the team, the under-12s as they were at the time, uh, all turned out in their rugby kits. And That's they all amazing. sat in one pew, and so Josh went and sat with them. So no, Josh wasn't actually with me during the service, he was a couple of rows in front. But there was a, a lovely camaraderie amongst them, because and it was it, his, his first funeral. I guess it'd be quite striking in as, a, as an image in the, mm. in the church itself, with yeah. the children all sitting together with like a real, like you said, camaraderie. That's, yeah, that, that's and at the, end when they, at the end when they drove away, they were all lined, they lined the street and that's gave them a clap. That's it's going to make emotional now, but and so it was very poignant. And of course, because he was at high school with them all, my Nelson went in his school uniform. All the mm -hmm. other kids that had known him, who were invited, went in their uniforms. And his primary school teachers were there, and his preschool teachers, and the head teacher in the school, the yeah. high school, the choir that he was part of. They came and they sang, and it was really you know. So these children were coming. Some of them were coming to their first funeral. Of course, and it's a quite a. Yeah, you know, I mean, Nelson, my eldest, is very. He was very stoic about the whole thing. You know, it's, I can't believe he's gone. It's not, you know, it's not really right. sunk in. He was stood next to me. Um, there was a couple of kids his age stood next to me as well, and the coffin came in. And Nelson, who had not said anything really about it, just went. Right. That was it. From then on, he was just absolutely blubbing. And at the end, he just turned to me. And as a fourteen-year-old, they don't often do a lot of the whole you know, emotional no. to mum thing. You know. Yeah. But he just put his arms around me and he sobbed. And he was just heaving. And it was... Behind him, there were all his old primary school teachers. Right. So they all had their hands on his back. And he mm. said at the end, he said, I could feel people putting their hands on my back. And I said, yeah, it was like your old head teacher. And it was really quite poignant and yeah. very... But, you know, they dealt with it really well. They dealt with it very well. I think kids at funerals, they are more susceptible to 
triggers like、mm. the coffin or the closing of the、yeah. curtains or certain words said by the vicar or the celebrant. Yeah. And I really don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I don't, I don't really feel that adults should, if they. Want to cry? I, I don't feel like th- they should stop themselves. No, I mean, I cry an awful lot. I was at a funeral recently that it wasn't somebody I knew particularly well, but it reminded me of Lucas, so I, I suddenly found myself all well enough.、Yeah. And it is, they are hor- horribly emotional things in many ways. Well, horribly, but they are, they are tough things to go, to go through.、Yeah. I, did, I sang at my grandma's funeral at the end, and I think it was only because I was about eight. No, I don't know how old I was then. 20 maybe,、mm-hmm. and I managed to sing at the end, which was quite a difficult thing. But it, I don't know, there's something that kicks in that just says you have to do it. Yeah, I mean, my, my dad's asked me to take his funeral. Really? And I said yes, but I'm going to be taking up a backup celebrant in case、yeah. I melt. Yeah. The funerals are so important to give people closure, but、mm-hmm. it's also it's okay if it doesn't give you closure. I think they are important, but when you're getting emotional, you can't really predict how people's grief will work. You really can't. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I think Josh, Josh, I couldn't see him because he was in front of me. I, I think he probably was crying, but I couldn't、mm. see、mm. Nelson. I know was, he, he said to me afterwards, he said, I wasn't intending to cry. <laughs> I said,、and、but that's what funerals are. That's the, wrong, just, that's the wrong attitude to go in with. He doesn't、yeah. know any better, but、no. you can't think like that. You just go because it's. The last opportunity you've、yeah. got to celebrate that person's life with everybody else. Exactly, and I think that's what it suddenly brought home to them, at least. Yeah. Which is, in a way, you know, it's a horrible thing to have happened, but they've, they've faced it to、mm. a degree now with a close friend. And hopefully it will prepare them slightly for、yeah. events in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about your funeral. Have you decided if you want to be buried or cremated? I can't decide. Okay. There's a little bit of me that wants to be buried, I think, but I know that that takes up space. It I does. Not, I'm not big, though, I'm only little. <laughs> That's not、I'm、really how it the, works. I'm expanding sort of horizontally. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they do ha- wow. They do have different size coffins for people,、mm. but、um, you, you're not excessively small or excessively large, so I think you'd have. <laughs> A kind of average size coffin. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm not calling you average, but. <laughs> the average coffin? <laughs> so, if you are going to be buried, would you want to be buried in a religious plot or a non religious plot? or... I think. Oh, it's really difficult. I, th- I mean, there's so many places in the world that I think are important to me. Have you heard of woodland burials? Is that where you just get a plot in a wood?、Somewhere? Basically, yeah. yeah. It's, th- these are newer. Newer、um, cemeteries that、mm. are a little bit more environmentally friendly, a little bit more spacious, and it is basically a massive forest where you get, where See, you get that, buried there. That to me would be better. I love,、mm. I love being outside. I don't like being in very claustrophobic places. I'm not、no. big on, you know, I'm a very sociable person, but I'd rather be in wide open space in nature rather than in a cramped inner city. So the、mm. idea of being in a cemetery with lots of other people,、yeah. not that they're necessarily talking a lot, but there's an element of. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you never know. You know, they might all get out and they all, might all want late night parties. Late, and all la- that late kind night of stuff. parties in the cemetery. That, I don't want to be, the, wanna be the, the miserable ones banging on the side going, shut up, for God's sake, <laughs> trying to get a bit of rest. <laughs> Eternal. I have worked really hard all through my life. <laughs> I need a kid. I need some sleep. <laughs>、um, yeah, I just, but I think a woodland burial would be nice. Cremation, I've just never really walked. <laughs> oh, God. I was going to, sorry, I was going to use a pun.、Uh, no. Use the pun. I was going to say I'd never really warmed to it. But wow. That <laughs> wasn't intentional. No, but th- that's part of the point of this podcast <laughs> is that death isn't a taboo. You can、no. talk about it. And I'm getting on all different people who are from all different walks of life, people that I think are interesting and hopefully other people will、mm. too. And death isn't a taboo. And if these people that are. That hopefully people like and think are cool are talking about death, and maybe it makes it a bit more comfortable for everybody、yeah. else. And death is an element of life, and you joke about every other element of life. Mm, so yeah, uh, you so you've never warmed. I've never warmed to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have heard、um, a story.、Uh, there was something that was read out, I think it was the Birmingham Crematorium, had issued an apology. Um, so、years and years and years ago, and I heard it on the radio. Right.、Um, issued an apology to a family who they'd given them a, they'd given them a track to play 
an album in right. the days when you had CDs, right? Yes, yes. yes. It, it, it works on what's called the Wesley system now. <laughs> right. Which is, it, it, it's essentially a playlist on a, a on an app. Most, at least most crematoriums have that. And they just, it's planned before the celebrants yeah. and the vicars get there. So it's all, it's all ready to go. You just quickly check that you've got yeah. the right songs. Well, they hadn't checked. Funny and that. They... I thought, the, I thought this was where <laughs> the story was going. Apparently it was some, it was an album and they played the wrong one, which was Smoke Gets In Your Eyes, and which is never right. suitable I for, mean, a cre- <laughs> for a cremation. But you say that. I've, I've heard, it wasn't my ceremony, but one of my colleagues finished with Bat Out of Hell. <laughs> and I've had... Uh, I love that song. And, it's um, a long one, though. <laughs> and the, the, what's the one? The Ring of Fire is oh a very popular God. one as well, <laughs> believe it or not. But that, that's for people who, I think, want to make people laugh at their ceremonies. But from what you're saying... Maybe woodland burials for you. Yeah, I think so. They're, it's 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 a relatively new thing. There's only like three or four locally in our kind of area, Greater Manchester, Cheshire. But by the time you and me are anywhere near that age, it's probably going to be a regular thing. So yeah, may, maybe something for you to think that about in future. That would be good. Well, it would be good. It would, that, that, certainly something that I'd be more open to than the other options. Bury you and plant a tree on top of you. There you go. Yeah. And nobody move me. Put preservation order on it or something yeah, yeah. I, th- I think there is elements of that in yeah. in the woodland burials as well so we'll talk about the rest of your funeral okay do you have any idea of what you what poem or prose you might like read at your funeral um yeah i really like a poem that i have a book called the nation's favorite poems and i think it's mm-hmm. compiled years ago by i think it might have been the bbc i'm not i was gonna sure. say it sounds like the b yeah and they had in the front, a poem that was sort of the people's choice. Uh, I think number one was actually something like If by Rudyard Kipling. But there was a Which poem. Which is wonderful. It is a wonderful poem. Um, but there is one that's slightly... It was found on a soldier, and it's anonymous, but it was found in his papers when he was killed. Oh, so maybe he wrote it? He might have done. I'm mm. not sure who did, but by default it kind of got more votes than anyone else, but after publication or something like that, and it's right. called Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep. Right, yes, I have heard it. And it's a lovely, it's just lovely. It's just a really, really nice piece of prose, and and quite uplifting. Mm. There is another one I've heard recently, I think, at Lucas's, which was along the similar line, which is When, when Tomorrow Starts Without Me. Yes. But this one's just slightly... I don't know, I just like it. Mm, fair enough. And the final thing is, um, we've, we've decided you're having a woodland burial now. Yeah. That, that, that's, that, that's set. But it doesn't mean you can't take a Bluetooth speaker. No. So what music I tracks... I Bluetooth it from inside. You, that would freak people well, out. Well, well yes. That, <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> Especially if there was a knocking sound. <laughs> you can't have a knocking sound no! put in your coffin. <laughs> I'm still here! <laughs> You should record that now and then give it <laughs> to the funeral that. director. No, no, no funeral director okay. worth their salt would allow you okay. to do that, I don't Fabulous. think. Even one of the more progressive ones that allows you a woodland burial. <laughs> <laughs> so what music tracks would you select for the entrance, for the reflection period and for the exit of your funeral? I would... There's a really lovely song... Uh, which actually, yeah, I chose this because it's sort of an ABBA. It is an ABBA song. Well, that makes sense for you. It does, but it's actually a really nice sort of acoustic version of a song called uh, When All Is Said and Done. Okay. It talks about, it just talks about standing at the crossroads with nowhere left to run and, and not being frightened about it. So like lyrics are important to you? Lyrics are very important, yeah. Mm. I love instrumental music. Um, I lo- and soundtracks are always very important to me. Mm. Not necessarily Pearl Harbor. But Maybe I'm not <laughs> going back to Pearl Harbor. You're not having Pearl Harbor. Right? Um, you don't have to. But Into the West as well from by Annie Lennox, which right. actually comes from the final Lord of the Rings film. Right. Okay. And uh, basically, it's uh, it's just a lovely song. But I I was very influenced as a child by Lord of the Rings. Mm. It was a uh, my dad read me The Hobbit when I was very little, and then he read me The Lord of the Rings, and then the films yeah. came out completely different but but uh, the music's really nice and it talks about just sort of sailing away so yeah. I, I uh i thought that would be quite apt it's a as nice well. one too oh, brilliant hmm and uh, there's probably an upbeat one that i need to think of to yeah. put in but not dancing queen not I'm dancing not, queen. not, <laughs> not gonna over aber it no <laughs> <laughs> no but um there's probably a musical number in there somewhere that i could mm. slip in so you think something upbeat to, to finish with yeah 
but you haven't yeah. decided what it is. I yet. haven't decided yet. No. Well, you've got plenty of time. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning on it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it for this episode of Life's Milestones with you, Cap. Um, where can people find you on the internet? They can find me on Facebook, um, and the easiest thing to find me under would be Noodle Performance Arts Cheshire. Okay. Um, and that is probably the easiest way to contact me. It's also for UK Beyond And as well. UK Beyond, um, yes, you can, again, Facebook, social media under UK Beyond, a tribute to ABBA. Either of them on Twitter or Instagram or any of the other ones that I don't are, understand? Um, yeah, they are all. I mean, Noodle, we are at Noodle Treasure mm-hmm. on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, really. So Brilliant. you can find us on that. And I believe it will be at UK Bjorn for Twitter and Instagram. But basically, if you can't find us, Google will do the job yeah, in some way. And you've got websites for both of them as websites well. Websites for both, yeah. Brilliant. Anything else that you would like to plug before we go? Well, if you're, you know, if you if you fancy seeing me or this wonderful man in front of me in yeah. some kind of unusual costume, silly outfit, silly outfit, um, then yeah, of course we do parties for kids, entertainment. Pirate is my best. Pirating, but is you know, I'm also your, available. He's a great showman as well. Yeah, I'm, great show. I'm also available as the greatest showman and, and Darth Vader <laughs> and Olaf. <laughs> yeah, I was Olaf once. <laughs> and uh, and yes, yes, if you've got children who are. Um, I think Elsa's probably your best. You were also good at um, the mermaid one. What's her name? Oh, Ariel. Ariel. Yes. You're also good Ariel's as well. Ariel's good. But I you, like you're Ariel. pretty good Wonder Woman too. Oh, I've you look you good know, in those boots. I'm, I'm, that's my thing on uh, this coming week. I'm a, I'm an Air, um, Wonder Womaning. Wonder so, Womaning. <laughs> good Wonder words. Womaning. <laughs> yeah, I do like. I like them all. Really, they're all good. Princess Leia, I love. Mm. Princess Leia. Got to be Princess Leia. Yeah. For them Star Wars parties. Yeah. Yes, so and, and any children who are aspiring actors, send them our way. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me, Cap. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'd just like to say one more thank you to Cat Allen for taking the time out of her busy schedule to have a sit and have a chat with me about birth and naming ceremonies, relationships and weddings and death and funerals. As I mentioned at the start of the show, small businesses like cats, like mine, have been hit badly by the current situation. However, cat is still providing innovative stuff during lockdown. So she does have online classes in dance, performing arts and acting for various ages. She has birthday recordings on offer and she has Zoom parties and workshops that you can buy from her. All of these are obviously lockdown specific, but there are a number of different cool little workshops coming up that you will be able to engage with if you've got kids that you think would be interested in it. Check out at Noodle Cheshire or www.noodleperformancearts.com forward slash Cheshire for any of that information. Get in touch with Kat and see whether there's anything that she can provide for you. Before we go, a little bit of news from me. I'm actually training online to become a naming ceremony celebrant. I've already got accreditation in weddings and funerals, but namings was the last one of the three that I needed to become what is known as a life cycle celebrant. So hopefully by the end of June, maybe early July, I'll also be accredited in naming ceremonies as well. And what I've decided to do in celebration of this, because it's just something that I've been looking forward to so much, what I'm going to do, and this is a permanent thing for regular listeners of Life's Milestones, is I'm going to offer a 10% discount to regular listeners who, when you get in touch with me, if you quote the word milestones, I'll give you a 10% discount on any naming ceremony or wedding performed by me. It's something I'd like to offer because I like the fact that there are people listening in to this podcast and I want to offer something to my regular listeners. Thank you for joining me for Life's Milestones. I'll be back in a fortnight with another guest. I'll see you then. Life's Milestones is a podcast by me, Mark Adams. Follow me on Twitter at MarkAdamsHC. That's also my handle for 
Instagram. If you're looking for my website, it's www.humanist.org.uk forward slash Mark Adams. If you're looking for my Facebook, it's Mark Adams Humanist Celebrant. All the information on how to use me as your celebrant is there. The show's social media is at Life's Milestones on Twitter. Other than that, I am just using my celebrant contacts for the show. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Previously on the We Made This Network. Make it so. Someday we will sing songs of the battle of Discovery's survival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it yeah. And Tony, if it had been any other series, if it had been any other project, if it had been any other project other than, oh, being the flagship to launch a whole new commercial enterprise by a little entity no one ever heard of called CBS, if it had not had a, like a three-way <laughs> pressure point, if there'd been this kind of problem in development on anything else, they would have pulled the plug mm. and, you know, yeah. uh, walked away. But it was Star Trek, and it had to launch this new series, and the whole world is watching. So, by God, keep throwing <laughs> money at it until we get something <laughs> on, the, on the screen, literally. Pull or pass. Amazon Prime in the UK is now listing New Mutants as a pre-order. Yes. Um, it it's got a... T- it's got a 12 rating, and it's got no release date. <laughs> yeah. But you can so pay not, for it up front. You can. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm almost tempted, because it'll just kind of like drop in your Amazon when it's available. And it's a film I've wanted to see for a very long time. I, just, I wonder whether we'll notice that the, the cast have aged by the time we get to see that film. <laughs> The Movie Palace. Okay, so the main reason we're here, of course, is this new book, um, Daring Darlene, Queen of the Stream. How would you describe this book to people who are unaware of it? Um, I mean, you can give away as much of the story as you want, I guess. Um, but yeah, how would you kind of pitch it, I suppose? Well, it's a story of a, of a girl named um, Darlene, who has been a, an actress in the silent film industry since earliest childhood. She was a child star. Check out all of these shows and more on the We Made This podcast network.